Hi, I'm Harry Donahue, and this is Inside Golf. Today we head to Cedarbrook Country Club in Bluebell, where Corps Superintendent Tim Kelly will give us an update on a two-year improvement project that is just about complete. Then it's up to look away in Bucks County to see who came out on top of the Players' Championship, which has become one of the Philadelphia PGA's top events of the year. And it wouldn't be inside golf without our panel of experts diving in to another hot golf tub. So that's the lineup for today's show. A look at the renovations at Cedar Brook and the recently played Philadelphia Section Players Championship at Beautiful Lookaway. That's next on Inside Golf. The 27th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. Your next golf getaway is in Valley Forge in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Visit valleyforge.org. By the First Tee Greater Philadelphia. The First Tee not only helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit firstteephiladelphia.org. By the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents, a community of professionals enhancing the game of golf since 1925. Make sure you thank your golf course superintendent today. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAF, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia PGA section, the experts in the game and business of golf. Golf is the great equalizer. For many, this journey is an escape from reality. A chance to be part of a team career opportunity. PGA Reach impacts lives through golf by lifting people up, giving them hope, and sending them down an alternate path that they never saw coming. With PGA Reach Philadelphia, as in life and in golf, the most important shot you take is the next one. When you vacation in Montgomery County, PA, your money worries get a vacation too. Oh, you gotta get your value. Feel free to explore the soldiers' huts. Free? <laughs> Four bucks, that's it? Keep the lettuce coming, Diane. <laughs> Woo, parking is free! Hey, it's free! With so many affordable things in Montgomery County, go ahead, freak out. <laughs> Hi, Tony Salucci with the Beacon Group of Companies. If your company has between 50 and 500 employees enrolled, in your health insurance plan, there's a really good chance we can reduce your costs significantly and increase the benefits employees receive. How do we do it? We put you together with several thousand employers of a similar size across the country so your company can get amazing buying power. Schedule a conversation with one of our employee benefits specialists today at mybeacongroup.com. Welcome back to Inside Golf. We're at Cedarbrook Country Club, Bluebell, Pennsylvania. We're talking with Tim Kelly, who's now in what, year five of your position as the superintendent of grounds, golf yeah, course superintendent. Just finished up uh, fifth season here, yeah. I feel like golf has uh, gone around the area looking for what superintendents and golf clubs in particular are doing in terms of uh, keeping up with the times, making some changes, restorations, innovations, whatever. And you've got a project here it is now in stage two. You began it last year on the back nine. There were several holes that were redone, and now we're standing on the front nine, and specifically at uh, what number five, a part three yeah. uphill. Yeah. And um, tell us about first of all the aim of the project, the two phases, and how things are moving along right now. Uh, things are moving along uh, very well. Uh, last year we did the first phase of our project, which uh, encompassed the 10th, the 15th, the 16th, uh, those holes entirely, and then the 12th green and the 13th tee complex. Uh, this year we're attacking some holes on the front. We're doing the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 9th green complex. Um, so things have progressed very nicely. Um, the goals of, of these renovations uh, well, there's multiple goals, really. Um, as you know, you know, uh, Stanton Country Club became Cedarbrook Country Club and moved up here in 1962, uh, trying to reconnect with some of that classic architecture, the A.W. Tillinghast architecture of the uh, of the old property. So that's one of the main priorities. The other thing has been to trying to make the golf course more friendly to all. Uh, 
all skill levels of golf, essentially. Uh, have a lot of narrow fairways, narrow approaches, um, kind of same shape bunkers, not much variety, and uh, just trying to open up the gateway for the uh, people you know, just starting to learn and the people who are at the later stages of their golf careers. How large a crew do you have here? and have had in the last year when you started the project in terms of doing and accomplishing what you want to do. Is it all in-house in terms of the crews and everything else? No, no. We've, we've picked off some in-house work to help out the contractor, but uh, we're working with Jaeger Kovic, uh, who is our architect. Uh, his company is called Proper Golf and Labar Golf Renovations. Uh, they've been our contractor for all the earth moving and, and um, sodding and irrigation install and all that stuff so tell us about we're standing here on the the green at number five what has changed with this green in particular uh, what has changed with this green in particular is the old green essentially only had pin locations in the back right uh, what we've done with this green is create pin positions throughout the entire green as you can see there's some some tier work but we have back left a little bit in the middle back right we have stuff through the middle of the green and then uh, uh, pin location in the front left. The other thing that we've done with this whole complex is try to uh, specifically reconnect, I think it's the eighth hole that was at uh, Stenton Country Club in Cheltenham. Uh, that was an A.W. Tillinghast design course and it was also actually renovated by Donald Ross. So again, to try to reconnect with, um, you know, with that old classic architecture. Right. Now we're standing here on the back of this green. There is a noticeable slope, sort of a backstop you got back here. How in terms of square footage has this green changed now compared to what it was for, what, uh, 45, 50 yeah, years? Yeah, we've, we've added roughly 2,000 square feet just wow. to this green. Um, so Mainly to get different pin placements or you know, just to expand it and make it, uh, you know, it doesn't get the wear and tear that it would have gotten. Yeah, it's pin placements and, and anytime you're building a green on an uphill par three, you know, you're trying to keep visibility of the green, number one, uh, but to get pin placements throughout the whole entire green, obviously you got to have some slopes and some undulations. So to have those slopes, then you have to have the pinnable areas big enough so that the ball doesn't keep rolling. Um, and I think that's just kind of how and why this green ended up at 8,500 square feet. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good sized green. Now, in addition to the green on this par three, uh, also some tee boxes have been redone as well and in the process of being completed now. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, so the tee boxes on four and five are getting rebuilt. Number five, this tee complex at the bottom, uh, used to kind of be two, uh, two tees side by side. Uh, what we've done is kind of combine the two get a little bit more space forward. So uh, our members that play the white tees are a little bit closer. Uh, they were averaging 160 to 170. Now they're gonna be averaging 140 to 150. This has been invasive in more ways than one. How has it changed, uh, shall we say, the members' ability to play the golf course? Because you had to shut down last year a whole, what, back nine? Yes. And now you're, that was in the winter time and it was ready to go for the full 18 in the spring, I assume, and the same kind of calendar or target date for reopening the entire course will be in time for spring of 2024. Yeah, last year we shut down uh, October 17th and we reopened May 4th. This year we shut down October 2nd and we're looking at the same timeline in terms of, of reopening the front nine. Um, you know, in terms of shutting down the entire front nine only to work on four holes, um, it was more of a logistics, safety, and also efficiency for, for Labar uh, Golf to, you know, do what they have to do, essentially. Mother Nature was pretty good, you told me, last year, helping you get the work done on time. Yep. Here we are, what, and it feels like it's springtime in Bluebell. Yeah, yeah no, weather's been absolutely outstanding. Um, we're ahead of schedule, though, because last year we still had to uh, finish draining and putting liner in all these bunkers and getting sand in them. So. Uh, this year we're definitely ahead of the game uh, in terms of uh, having a lot more sod out, bunkers complete and stuff like that. So, Tim, stay ahead of the game. Okay, congratulations. It's going to look good on his resume, isn't it, folks? What a beautiful, beautiful change it is for the members and anybody that comes out here to play at Cedarbrook. Good luck to you, Tim Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Dunning. More coming up right here on Inside Golf. This golf tournament means a lot to me, and it's one that I always mark on, on the schedule. 
whatever, however many majors we have, this is the last one. J. Wood Platt Caddy Scholarship Trust is the official charitable arm of GAP. The trust's mission is to financially aid and empower qualified caddies and those working in golf operations in the pursuit of higher education. Over $25 million has been awarded to more than 3,700 caddies. J. Wood Platt's Empower program strengthens scholarship investment dollars by providing our scholars with exceptional benefits. Visit our website, platscholar.org to learn more. For over two decades, First Tee has created experiences that build character. We believe every kid deserves to feel supported, safe to try something new, and to be prepared for what comes next. We develop their swing, but more importantly, their inner strength. Because we know what's inside doesn't just count, it changes the game. Come join us at First Tee. Welcome back to Inside Golf. You know, one of the marquee events of the Philadelphia section of the PGA's calendar is the Players' Championship, and it was held recently at Lookaway in Bucks County. Michael Little from Clubhouse 54 won the 2023 Philadelphia Players' Championship at Lookaway by two strokes over Bitterman Golf Club's John Lynch. Mike shot an impressive seven under par 65 to win the championship. Previously, he had worked at Lookaway when the event was created by Scott Hutchinson. Hutchinson and his wife Karen helped to make the event's purse one of the largest in the Philadelphia section. You know, basically for me, you know, I spent nine years of my life here, um, you know, almost every single day of my life on this property. Um, this golf tournament means a lot to me, and it's one that I always mark on, on the schedule. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm happy that I was able to get that one done, for sure. You know, this is, this to me, this is our whatever, however many majors we have, this is the last one, you know, and, uh, and, and it means a lot. Little's impressive round began with a birdie on the very first hole. That was followed by a bogey on number two. But that would be Mike's only bogey of the day. He went on to birdie the par five third hole, the par four fifth, and the par five eighth to go to the back nine at three under par. Obviously, it was a great start, but Little's finish was what secured him the championship. He birdied the par 5 13th, and then coming down the stretch, made birdie on the par 4 16th, and he eagled the par 5 17th. It was an especially great round for Little on Lookaway's par 5s. He finished those holes at 5 under par. Mike's win at Lookaway capped off a very impressive 2023 season. He finished second to Braden Shattuck from Rolling Green in the 2023 Philadelphia PGA Section Player of the Year point standings. He had two wins during the year. Three times he was the runner-up. He had eight top 10 finishes and 12 top 25 finishes. I played this golf course a million times, so I know the course, I knew what I had to do. Um, and then on 18, I just said, you know, just anywhere in that fairway, you know you can hit that green with, with any club really in your bag. So just, just hit it in the fairway. That was all I was thinking. Wasn't trying to hit it hard. Wasn't trying to sneak it in any area. Just hit it in the fairway. I uh, had an eight iron in, hit it to about 10 feet. And I asked my group, I said, hey, where do I stand on the 18th hole? And they were like, you can three putt. Don't worry, you'll be okay. So, you know, I didn't know where I, where I, where I stood in the golf tournament, but I knew that, you know, it was... I, what I wanted to do was put pressure on myself because I love playing with pressure. I love seeing what I can do when I get under the gun and when I have pressure on me. So that's why I didn't really ask. But uh, once I found out I could, I could just do whatever, I just kind of really just cozied it up there, made my par. And um, that's really kind of how the, the round went. It was, uh, it, was, it was just make a lot of putts and hit the right shots when you have to hit the right shots. Three pros tied for third place in the Players' Championship at three under par. Rich Steinmetz from Springford. 
Anthony Sebastianelli from Rolling Green, and Michael Meisensall of Little Mill. The event also featured a senior division, with Steinmetz taking the top prize by three strokes over Linfield Nationals' Hugo Mazzalupi. Terry Herzog from Bent Creek tied for third, along with Brendan Post, who's the assistant golf coach at the University of Delaware. They were both at one over par. Laurel Creek's Dave Quinn and Royal Oaks Golf Club's Terry Hatch tied for fifth at three over. My, my game has really uh, come along, you know, the end part of the season here, you know, and it feels really good to, to get a second win. I mean, obviously, Braden had, you know, player of the year wrapped up a long time ago. Um, so we were all really playing for second place. And uh, this win today allowed me to, you know, get into second place in our player of the year race. So I'm really proud of that, um, being right behind our, uh, our national champion. So um, the last couple of weeks, uh, the putter has just been hot. It's really been hot all year. Um, I kind of went through a little bit of a swing change in the last like uh, six weeks um, with my coach Nick Biondi, and um, you know we really just really hammered home on what we were trying to do. And uh, now I'm hitting the ball better, and I'm controlling the golf ball, um, and I'm combining that with my putting, and uh, obviously it's showing in my scores. And congratulations to Mike Little for being the winner of the Players Championship at Look Away. Stay with us. Coming up next here on Inside Golf, it's our teed off panel. One real sleeper for me is Lehigh Country Club. Yeah. That is a great golf course. Uh, I think it's a William Flynn. You talk about all the great Flynns that are around here. That's a well-kept secret. Welcome back. Inside Golf now continues with our teed off panel. Once again, we are assembled here in the clubhouse at Lulu Country Club in Upper Dublin. And the Christmas tree is still up, still feeling a little bit of uh, the happiness of uh, the gift giving season and so forth. So hope you had a happy holiday and a great 2024 shapes up for you, especially when it comes to golf. All right, our panel today, speaking of Lulu, he's our ambassador from Lulu, Mr. Jim Sullivan. Thanks, Sully, Harry. good to see great you. Great to see you. Oscar Mestri, uh, of course, president of GAP for three years, always Fun to see Oscar when he shows up here at Teed Off. And we have Mike Brown. He is the president of the First Tee of Philadelphia. And they just celebrated their 20th anniversary. Had Tom Watson in town. And uh, boy, 20 years went like that, right? Yes, it did. 20 more, I hope, and counting for the First Tee. First Tee will be around for 20. I don't know about me, Harry. I got you there. We won't go there. We won't go there. Uh, you three guys, good players in your own right. And you've probably played most, I should say, of the iconic golf courses in the Philly area, if not beyond, okay? But, Brownie, it's hard to imagine you still have a list to check off of three or four golf clubs that you haven't played yet. Well, I, I would say in the U.S., I feel pretty comfortable that I've kind of reached my goal. And um, <laughs> I, I think maybe the travel has been too far, but maybe in this next couple of years, maybe it's time for me to go down under. Really? And go to the sand belt. Down to Melbourne. Melbourne. Okay. Yep. Adelaide. Indeed, right? Yeah. I, I think. Uh, I'm sure you could pick up the phone and make that happen, right? We have a few members that are down there. But I, I will tell you, when you watch the Australian Open or things like that on TV, you, you come back and it, it looks a lot like a Pine Valley, a Galloway, a Union League National. There's sand everywhere and the green yeah. complexes are tremendous. Just a long way to go to play golf here. All right. But it wouldn't be the first time for you. No, right? no. Uh, yeah, just a little longer. A little longer. How about it, Oscar? I'm going to be a lot easier, Harry. I don't need to travel that far. Okay. <laughs> so, so any friends that want to want, want to make this happen? No, I would love to play. I'd say the three golf courses that that uh, would uh, be on my list would be Shinnecock, um, Augusta, and Cypress. Those would be the three golf courses that uh, I haven't gotten to. I would love to get to. Um, they would check off some major boxes. Well, now that you have sort of like retired as the president of the Gap, you can uh, call in a few markers and uh, get up. I mean, Shinnecock, you can be there in what, uh, two and a half hours or something, right? That's right. That's yeah. Right. So, well, we're going to find out. How yeah. We're, we're going to find out. We're going to find out what people really think of me, Harry. Right. Maybe your cell phone will light up as soon as the show is off the air. Uh, Sully. I mean, you're the youngest guy on the panel, yeah, by but I'm far, sure you've played yes. by Not far, admittedly. But I'm sure you've played some of the iconic, I know you have, courses in the area and in the country. Yeah. But what's still on your list to check off? 
So in, in the U.S., I would probably put Augusta at the top of that list. I haven't played Augusta or Cypress. I've had the fortune of playing Pine Valley and Shinnecock each a decent number of times, Marion. Um, but I, I would put Augusta at the top of the wish list in the U.S. But of all courses, if you just said, hey, you've got one course you can pick, then that's the, that's the one. It would be St. Andrews. Kind of haven't, haven't been there, and, and sort of it would be a religious-type experience, wanting to really um, absorb it as well as possible. But that, that would be the pinnacle for me. Believe it or not, a good friend of mine is a member of the RNA, therefore St. Andrews, and he's sitting right here. <laughs> he's sitting right yeah. here. You, you timed it perfectly. Yeah. Huh? Do you hear that? Yeah, yeah. Not, it, was, it was not a mistake, huh? Kerry. Not a mistake. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think this is Santa Claus going to make a lot of dreams have you, come you, true. Have you played uh, St. Andrews? I have played St. Andrews. Oh, okay. I have well, then I'll take but I'll your go place. along. I'll go along You'll to go play along. it again. You'll always go back. This could be a build a foursome <laughs> conversation also. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's amazing. Um, how about in the Philly area? I mean, it's hard to imagine you have, but I'm sure there's a course you haven't played in a, maybe ever or in a long time that you would like to get out on. Long time. Uh, one real sleeper for me is Lehigh Country Club. Mm. Okay. That is a great golf course. Uh, I think it's a William Flynn. You talk about all the great Flynns that are around here. Yeah. That's a well-kept secret. Not a lot of people have played there. Um, lots of ups and downs. Um, not far from Saucon. Um, if I did have like a day the longest day of the year, and I could do one thing, I'd like to play all three Salkin courses in one day. In the day. same day? Yeah. Wow. 54 holes. Holes in one day. And, and, and great complex. Yeah, unbelievable complex. Yeah, absolutely. Really. How about that question about in the Philly area, yeah. is there a course or two that you haven't played or would like to go back and play that you haven't well, played in a the, while? There's, there's honestly, you know, we, we have an embarrassment of riches, right? Yes. In, in the Golf Association of Philadelphia footprint. So uh, there's lots that I'd like to go back and play, honestly. It, it, too many, too many to, to, to mention. I mean, Saucon Valley is a great facility. I mean, Rolling Green, I've always said, is kind of like the forgotten, the forgotten. Uh, Another uh, William Flynn course. Gym. Yeah, I mean, at Lehigh, what, what a great facility and, 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 and experience that is. And, you know, and again, any time you step on to Marion, you play Marion, you go, wow. Uh, again, one of my all-time favorites is Huntington Valley. I mean, it, it, it it took a pound of flesh out of me before I learned how to play that place. Oh, you'd finally learn. Yeah, but huh? I, yes, I yes. was with you when that flesh was taken. <laughs> Wait, if you need any tips from Huntington Valley, uh, that guy to the left can do it for you. Yeah, he also can take you to Golf Mills. He won a, 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 a Philly Am at Golf Mills. Or Lulu. All right, you're the last on this list of uh, so, Philly courses. A, a, Atlantic City Country it Club. It's, it, it's not quite Philly, but it's certainly in the gap, and I have never played there. So it's it would, one where I would love to get it kind of in the spring, where it's nice and dry with the breeze before the flies have really picked up. But Atlantic City Country Club would be the local... Uh, that I've surprisingly, but haven't, haven't been to. Really? Yeah. I, even I can get you down there. All right, let's do that uh, too. <laughs> one of my favorite tracks is Atlantic City Country Club. Little snapper soup and everybody likes snapper soup, right? Absolutely. There you go. Okay, put it on your bucket list and we'll, uh, we'll take care of that. We'll make it happen. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll be back. More of Inside Golf coming up. Designed by Donald Ross, Lulu Country Club is one of the premier private golf courses in Montgomery County. This classic 18-hole course boasts a new state-of-the-art clubhouse with many amenities for members to enjoy. Members are invited to play in events, tournaments, and enjoy guest privileges. For more information, contact membership at lulucc.com. Hi, Tony Salucci with the Beacon Group of Companies. If your company has between 50 and 500 employees enrolled in your health insurance plan, there's a really good chance we can reduce your costs significantly and increase the benefits employees receive. How do we do it? We put you together with several thousand employers of a similar size across the country so your company can get amazing buying power. Schedule a conversation with one of our employee benefits specialists today at mybeacongroup.com. Hurricane is free! Hey, hey! Four bucks! Yes! With so many affordable things to do in Montgomery County, PA, go ahead, freak out! For over two decades, First Tee has created experiences that build character. We believe every kid deserves to feel supported, safe to try something new, and to be prepared for what comes next. We develop their swing, but more importantly, their inner strength. Because we know what's inside doesn't just count, it changes the game. Come join us at First Tee. 
the Golf Association of Philadelphia. Founded in 1897, GAP is the nation's oldest regional or state golf association. We serve amateur golf in Eastern PA, Southern New Jersey, and all of Delaware. GAP welcomes all golfers, junior or senior, male or female, public or private. Join the Golf Association of Philadelphia today. Our mission is always to preserve, protect, and promote the great game of golf. Before you tee it up, look us up. Visit GAPGolf.org to find out more. Don't forget, you can watch every episode of Inside Golf on YouTube. Just go to Inside Golf TV on the YouTube app. And down the road, we're going to be taking you on a tour of the United States Golf Association Museum in Far Hills, New Jersey. It is all about golf history, champions, and the greatest collection of golf trophies and memorabilia anywhere. We can't wait to show it to you. Once again, our congratulations to Mike Little for winning the Players' Championship, which has become, like I said earlier, a marquee event on the calendar of the Philadelphia section of the PGA. I'm Harry Donahue. See you next week right here on Inside Golf. The 27th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. Your next golf getaway is in Valley Forge in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Visit valleyforge.org. By the First Tee Greater Philadelphia. The First Tee not only helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit firstteephiladelphia.org. By the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents, a community of professionals enhancing the game of golf since 1925. Make sure you thank your golf course superintendent today. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia PGA section, the experts in the game and business of golf.